Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome back. Welcome back. Missed you. Know you're doing well. If you're new, ni hao. It is the weekend. Let's get into it and see what it may be. Well, look, uh, the market's doing much better. You know, it's up and down. I, I like trading sideways at right around 50, though. You know, better than right around 30, 32, 33, like we were for, several, for some months. In terms of Bitcoin, Ethereum at 3260 presently. Cardano, $2.88, inching back towards that $3, which means nothing. So for psychologically for people, they like to see round numbers. And remember that, you know, that way you can, we can start trying to guess how individuals are going to react in terms of the, the masses. And then we'll make our moves as, you know, People who, who, who think outside the box and can, can foresee what happens. That's, that's what it is. Dogecoin is making its way back up towards 30, but it's down quite a bit from its high of 74 cents. Solana is doing well, doing really well for the week. Positive, up even up 10% today. Mm -mm. A lot of projects are doing well and moving in the right direction. Some are down, but I guess the seven days just changed, so don't get too too caught up in that. Mark is doing well, and we're going to move into it. But before that, I know everyone is doing well. I know your health is well, and if not so, we will make it so. And we, by we, the broader sense of the universe and using attention to control. Speaking of which, we hear about that positivity. And if there's someone in your life that you admire, respect, that you think has been kind to you, that has shown you mercy in some way, write something kind about them down in the comment section and send them this video and say, hey, go look. I wrote something about you and get them a boost in a day so they can think about how much you now have immoralized that memory of them on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> People with social anxiety disorder showed improved symptoms and changes in brain activity following virtual reality therapy. So this is part of some of the cutting edge of where we'll be able to take a lot of treatment in terms of psychology, being able to have simulations of, you know, you know we'll, we'll be at the point where a patient will be able to describe their trauma, have a simulation that the, the artificial intelligence will be able to listen to that, their story, be able to generate a simulation that recreates that memory. They'll be able to go in, piece together, reprocess, and gain mastery over the sense of uh, feelings that they had at that time and how it's going to it's going to be difficult but it will be able to um really help individuals to um gain some uh, some just more just I don't want to say happiness but contentment in their life and an experiment published in JMIR Mental Health, people with social anxiety disorder show reduced social anxiety and less negative rumination following a virtual reality-based exposure therapy. Moreover, this reduction in symptoms was associated with changes in brain activity when participants judged whether positive words were self-revelant. You know, I listen to a show and they joke so much about it, I don't even know if I know how to say the word correctly. Self-revelant, revelant, yeah. Maybe butchering it. Hey. Brr, people with social anxiety disorder experience an intense fear of negative evaluation during social situations that greatly interfere with their quality of life. In investigating potential treatments for this disorder, psychology scholars have pinpointed virtual reality therapy as an effective intervention. Da, da, da. I want to get to yeah, uh, self -refer referential processing. 
uh, did a team researchers target a particular aspect of social anxiety disorder that is believed to be key to the development and maintenance of the disorder, self-referential processing, which refers to the processing of information related to oneself. So in there, their hypothesis is that you have this such an impaired sense of your place in reality. You, you, you see yourself as so damaged and so miscast that every interaction becomes judged by this skewered view of of reality. So even when there are successes, the person you know suffering from this disorder doesn't see them as such because they'll find a negative way to look at it uh, of viewing themselves in those situations. Self-referential process refers to the process of, appears to be biased among people with social anxiety. Using neural imaging, the researchers tested whether VR therapy would affect areas of the brain. So they already mapped out areas of the brain that appear to be processing more when when tasks are um, asked to be self-referential. In a sample, took part. Just I'm not going to go into the details of kind of the uh, the methods of the examination but at the end they found that the they found <clears throat> when they analyzed the the baseline data they found that people with social anxiety disorder showed increased active activation in certain parts of the brain during self-referential processing tasks when compared to the controls following the therapy the participants showed increased activity in various parts of the brain including frontal temporal and occipital lobes in addition, they show robust decreases in negative rumination and lower scores on the social phobia scale. Excellent. You want to see people improve. So go ahead. Understand that hopefully, not even hopefully, it's going to happen. It's, you, you, to what extent? Probably uh, greater than anything we imagine, but... The advent of virtual reality, augmented technologies, combined with the, the fifth generation connectivity, and they're already planning on sixth generation. So imagine what the, you know, individuals go, go come up with theories about that will look like. Sixth generation of uh, wireless communication. So, okay. Uh, moving on and, and thinking of awesome things that will be coming along. Autonomous ships, that cargo ships. This one is in Norway. Norwegian company called Yara. I may be mispronouncing that. International claims to have created the world's first zero emission ship that can also. Maybe I'll just put a card at the beginning and say, look, I mispronounce things. I, I, I ain't your advisor. I ain't your advisor. That don't I don't know if anybody said that, but don't steal that. I'm gonna use that. That's gonna be mine. I ain't your advisor for nothing. You hear me? I ain't your advisor. Uh, <laughs> if I have something at the beginning, just say uh, I mispronounced stuff, and I ain't your advisor. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Zero emission ship that can transport cargo autonomously. The Yara Birkland electric cargo ship was first conceptualized in 2017, but now looks to make its first voyage with no crew members on board later this year in Norway. So uh, this company been at it for a while. They were founded, Yara. In 1905, to combat the rise in famine in Europe at the time, the company created the world's first nitrogen fertilizer. Okay, look at you, Yara. In addition, now they want to fight, fight uh, emissions abatement. They want to focus on emissions abatement and sustainable agricultural practices. So they have this ship, Corn the Yara Birkin class electric cargo ship, would make its first autonomous voyage between two Norwegian towns. We are not going to try to. Uh, Brevik. I can do Brevik. They look like Hiroya. 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 And Brevik later this year. I probably butchered that. While there would. I know I butchered that. While there would be no. See, the whispers, I don't know. I don't know how you feel, but I, I laugh at it because I think of how, uh, you know, our president now does it, and I'd be dying laughing. <laughs> Maybe <try> to... <laughs> I know they probably talk to him behind the scenes and say, Sir, you please, could you stop whispering? They're, they're, it's creeping out to people as is, you know. So I, I got the dark sense of humor. 
While there would be no crew on board the cargo ship, it would still be closely monitored from three control centers. What, what, more, what more can we say? Autonomous ships, I said, planes, trains, automobiles, boats, anything that floats, anything underneath, submarines, invisible machines, transmedium. I mean, look, what, what, what we go to the spacecrafts. We already, we haven't even talked about the, it looks like a baby, a drone shuttle, a drone, you know, we used to, we used to have the, 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 Shuttles that would carry human humans to, uh, you know, the the space shuttle. We get called a space shuttle, and they have one that looks like a drone space shuttle now that carries missions out for years at a time. One year, two years, almost two years. The was it the X, sorry B X thirty seven. Maybe Butcher, I think it's X-37, but I'm sure we'll do a story about it when it comes back to land. It goes up, it's been in space, it's in space now. We have a drone space shuttle that's up there for years doing who knows what for years. Well, we know some of it. There was a science experiment uh, that they had recently, I think, where they projected the Pentagon was able to use solar collectors, taking energy in from the sun and beam that energy down to Earth, and they were able to... to demonstrate that that was feasible on this platform. I think it's the X-37, A and B, they got, we got two of them. So we know what's happening. Autonomous, the Tesla bot walking around, ships that could travel back and forth without human intervention. You know, eventually they, they see it just working completely autonomously. And when it would need something that would require what would seem like a human intervention, guess what they go have soon? A lot of, and it ain't gonna just be the Tesla bot. It's gonna be everybody else trying to make their own, you know, even if they're just licensing the software from Tesla that allows. And we'll, we'll talk about that in our in AI day and the interesting things they talk about that with the with the Dojo computer and the artificial intelligence that's gonna allow this massive neural network learning. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. It, it's where the future goes, but of course, just. There's occasionally difficulties with growth. FBI Palantir glitch, I wouldn't even call it a glitch, allowed unauthorized access to private data. Computer glitch in a secretive software program used by the FBI allows some unauthorized employees to access private data for more than a year. Prosecutors revealed in a new court filing the screw up in the Palantir program, a software created by a sprawling data analytics company. See, you know, they already attacking my man's and them already. I mean, when I say my man's, I'm just that's just generic talk. I don't know. None of these people it is what it is. Sprawling data co-founded by billionaire Peter Thiel was detailed in a letter by prosecutors in the Manhattan federal court case against accused hacker Virgil Griffin. Data recovered from Griffin's Facebook and Twitter accounts, which was obtained through a federal search warrant in March 2020, was accessed on Palantir for more than a year by at least four FBI employees, all of whom work outside New York and were not investigating the case, prosecutors wrote. So it appeared basically that Palantir is going to come out, and I'll read with their statement that came in a second, but Palantir gave them the system. There's some defaults in the system that they were supposed to go in, I'm guessing the administrators, and make the necessary adjustments. And, and you know, if, if, I believe I explained before in Palantir, if you're not clear or like the first time hearing it, and I forgot to say that, and I won't mention that again. I'll just always repeat stuff over and over again. So get used to it. Palantir software. Their software gathers a tremendous amount of data about everything. And we'll, I'll go a little bit into that, and that'll be probably a bigger topic we'll deep dive on, but they get a tremendous amount of data about any and everything. I think he even talked about some of the stuff they got to do. Now, that will show you what. But the, and, but they, they're able to, because they don't want to just, you know, one of their mission statements or the way they kind of operate or what they say in public, at least, is that 
they don't want that that technology was going to come the ability to, to drop all this data was going to happen total information awareness DARPA was looking for that back in the early 2000s, which is, let's just know everything at once, and from that we'll be able to predict the system. And a lot of that is already existing technology now. Or, you know, when we say predictive, it's not 100% right. It ain't, it's not, you know, the creator, but it give you, based on, and, and most things that happen on patterns, people and things, you can get a good sense of what's the probability of what's going to happen. So think of it more of a probability software but really good probability predictive software. So, but Palantir, because they don't want it to, to look like anybody can just abuse the system, they put all these safeguards in it, where it's supposed to be like layers. And if you have access to the Palantir system, your access may be determined to have certain layers of information, but not other layers. So you, if you're able to see into those deeper layers, you get to see the bigger picture and be able to, you know, at the end of the day, is it's it's it becomes yeah. But well, we against Big Brother in a sense. Like we done built the machines ourselves. But so Palantir said there was no glitch in the software. Our platform has robust access and security controls. The customer also has rigorous protocols established to protect search warrant returns, which in this case the end user did not follow. But they think it could be a bigger issue than a lot of people because this happened for over a year before anybody realized that, hey, you guys are not supposed to have access to this information. This is a New York investigation. So, boom, boom, boom. And the guy is accused of violating international sanctions by traveling north to Korea, North Korea and delivering a speech about cryptocurrency. You, you better not be talking about those cryptos outside the country, boy. They're going to get you, boy. Morgan Stanley owns over 1 million shares in Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Per filing with the SEC, the U.S. Security Exchange Commission's banking giant, Morgan Stanley holds over several, holds over several shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. The SEC file indicated that over 30 Morgan Stanley funds hold large amounts of GBT GBTC, which is the uh, ticker symbol for Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Remember, I ain't your advisor. So, no financial, no medical. I won't even, I mean, I was about to say, hey, I'm just, I'd be a spiritual, but I, look, I don't even want people thinking, you know, that. So, you know. If you gain something, that's on you. But I'm, I'm not your role model. <laughs> that what Chuck said back in the day. Uh, the round mound. The biggest C to be uh, Morgan's Insight Fund with over 928,051. Bitty, bitty, bitties. Bitty, bitties. Close to about seven, 700 Bitcoin. Okay. They handling a biz. So they got over a million in. They got one fund with close to a million. They got 30 funds with some. Yeah, they got more than a million. And at that time, the same people are buying more. Also, that uh, Morgan Stanley has large positions in, in uh, crypto based companies, major investor in Coinbase. So Morgan Stanley has been in the game deep. Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, every major bank in the U.S. seems to want to expand their Bitcoin expo exposition? exposition via different investments. Exposition via different investments. I got to see if that's a, a correct use of that word there or it threw me off. So very, very good. This look. The, uh, it's at this point, I'm almost feel like I'm going to be redundant in here talking about how awesome uh, Bitcoin is doing cryptocurrency. It's going to be like people who like, you You coming out talking, you, you going to make a channel now and talk about how awesome air is, air and water? Like, well, it, it seemed like people didn't quite understand. I kept trying to tell my friends and they were looking at me like I was crazy. So I said, you know, maybe. Hey. Bitcoin whales stock up on crypto amid strong buy signal. 
Large holders of Bitcoin are stocking up on a cryptocurrency, according to the latest data, leading some analysts to speculate that another major price rally is imminent. So-called Bitcoin whales, crypto wallets with at least 50 million worth of cryptocurrencies, have increased their holdings throughout June, July and August. The whales are not stupid. They... You know, they play well games, unfortunately. Some people, some, but not all wells. I mean, it's probably good wells, bad wells. Like everything in life is good and bad. But they get people to dump their, you know, they dump some, some Bitcoin. The prices go. People go panic. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. We got to get rid of our Bitcoin. And then they buy it all up. Even more. Get more. I get more. I get more. Of course, because they still have that when they decide to high is and then boom, let it fall down and then get some more. So do not sell your Bitcoin to me. I'm not a well, but, you know, I don't even know what any of this really means. I'm just saying. But if I was thinking like that, I'd be like that. Do not sell your Bitcoin to me because when you sell. People be buying and they're trying to accumulate as much as possible before everybody realizes, uh-oh, what you mean it ain't no more? Uh, but I'm not your advisor. I'm not your advisor. Not your, not your advisor. Not your advisor. And the picture of a nacho. Not your advisor. <laughs> I'm a nacho advisor, but not your advisor. Just talking about how MicroStrategy is continuing to accumulate more because Michael Saylor is no dummy. Could Cardano overtake in the battle the mighty Bitcoin and the ever dominant Ethereum? Does that even is that even a thing? Are they even competing? Why do we always think things have to compete? Why can't they work together in harmony to create a better existence for us? That's how I kind of like to see things. You know, I, but I like competition as much as the next person. Don't get it twisted. But I'm also I think we all can win in a way. You know, I think of it like the uh, was John Nash that uh, Russell Crowe played in Beautiful Mind. That his theorem, like, look, let's just find a way that we all can have the optimum uh, outcome instead of competing and thrashing. And, you know, maybe someone wins. A lot of people suffer. Suffering is not good. I believe in abundance. We have an abundance in this world, there's not a scarcity. People approach you in, in this way you see the world and your way you approach things. Is it, is it, is it just scarce? It's not that much love for you. It's not that much understanding. Or you see just uh, overflow of that for you that's available, that's yours. Because guess what? I see it as such, and I think it is for you as well. But, you know, you know how that works. Thinking for other people, it is what it is. Cardano has had a good run this year, even though the cryptocurrency market has struggled in the last few days, but it's on its way back up. Just a lot of talk about Cardano. For those who don't know, Cardano was created by Charles Hodgkinson, who was one of the help co-found with uh, um, um, Vitalik Buterin, um, Ethereum, one of the eight co-founders, they say here. But it, the difference I would say as an outsider looking in who has minimum understanding of anything is that Ethereum is more of, you know, hey, it is what it is. Ethereum became along, it became, if you say Bitcoin was the OG cryptocurrency and still boom, boom, OG. Ethereum was like, hey, we can do even more things with this. So, boom, almost 2.0. You got to go with 2.0 in that sense. With smart contracts, NFTs, DeFi, you got you to gotta give it its respect. So, Charles Hopkinson saw this and saw where it was going and said, and, and, and took it from a more rigorous academic standpoint and said, we can do such amazing things if we just take our time and be meticulous in our planning with this. And, you know, probably with some friction that other people didn't see it, went and created his own cryptocurrency. Boom, long story short, Cardano is the result of that rigorous study in terms of how to apply 
the smart contracts and the ability of writable data on the blockchain in terms of these uh, settable accounts with, you know, decentralized, um, a, de a decentralized core. And it's proof of stake already. Ethereum will get the proof of stake probably by next year, you know, maybe longer, it depends. We just had a good now, the ETH burn, and I'll be bringing up some point, the ETH burn that's occurring, it's because almost at like over a quarter of a billion at this point, getting close to, you know, probably be a billion by sometime um, next month, we're early in uh, October. So it's such a bright future. Please, if you just, you, it's just little bits a month, be buying this stuff. Even if it's just little bits, don't have to be the much, the much, the, you know, you don't have to own, you know, 10 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin and be feeling, you, you know, a, a thousand Cardano. No, just just buy what you can. it will be so much more valuable in the future. Um, but, you know, but you need to be thinking about investing a lot of things and, and, and making decisions that's going to, you know. Keep in a safe place. Having fun now, of course. Doing doing things that make you happy, but you don't want to be an old person worried about money. None of us do. So, but so Cardano is um, doing well. It's a smart system, proof of stake, restricts the flow of devices. It also has a lot less energy consumption compared to Ethereum, presently because of that faster at processing. Processes as many as two hundred fifty-seven transactions per second compared to five for Bitcoin, fifteen for Ethereum. So will it overtake it? You know, let's go, this is what we talk about market cap. So market cap for Cardano now is at 92 and it's at 288. So to get to $28, it'll be almost, you know, now, you know, 900, I was gonna say almost a trillion, but 920, the, the market cap where Bitcoin is today. So 10 times the market cap now for Cardano just to get to 28 bucks would be where Bitcoin is today at almost a trillion. To go about four times to get to about 10 bucks, it'll be where Ethereum is at. So you can see that 10, people thinking like, oh, it'll get to like 10 or 12 by 2045. No, not 45, I'm tripping, 2025 in a couple of years. Hey, this cycle, if things get to popping, we may see it get to, it may get to the Ethereum's about four times. Look, look, this ain't no advice, man. I don't know, man. If somebody feel like somebody, I gotta stop. I feel like somebody taking this as advice. You know what I mean? But that's your problem, anyway. <laughs> no, I'm so market cap. You know, right now, if if Bitcoin was to get to gold, it almost ten x. That would put you at around about nine trillion, right? And that'll be four hundred and ninety thousand. So, you know, close to half a mil, be close to I don't know if you if you're not looking at the screen, I'm on coin market cap and I'm um touching the numbers with the pointer and talking as if everybody can see through my eyes. So indulge me. Um I'm trying to say the numbers too as I'm doing it, but maybe I don't know. I'm trying to I'll remember more. So market cap there for Bitcoin. So that's how I look at it and think about, you know, where where are things are going to go in terms of what the likelihood of growth to go. For example, Tezos here was uh, is up 50 percent for the week. Right. Had a great week. I don't even I got to saw some news. I know I know they signed a deal. I forget it was who, but I started saw that sign a deal with my will. Suss that out and figure out what's up with Tezos. But Tezos is up almost by uh you know let's say 50 percent let's just go okay so almost like two dollars two dollars and fifty cents let's just say two dollars there's like three dollars and some about two two eighty something and now we have to f at uh five dollars and thirty nine cents and this only has a market cap of 4.6 billion not only but you know sorry relative terms so just to go up to the market cap of you know close to dogecoin or 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 uh, XRP for Tezos will be a 10x. 
you know, a, a 20x to get to where Cardano is right now. And remember, Cardano was down here with Doge and, uh, and XRP in terms of market cap just a couple of weeks ago before it went on its run. So they're not no no advice. Tezos, you buy on you do buy on Coinbase and you can get uh, one of the ones you get interest for. So Tezos, um, Cosmos, and um, Algorand, you get interest. You know, you just hold it, buy it, and hold it there on on Exodus Wallet too. But anyway, Tezos. So if it ten x go up to fifty bucks, ten x your money. If you had a hundred dollars in there, you'd be at a thousand dollars. Yeah, five hundred dollars got five thousand dollars. Got a thousand dollars got ten thousand dollars. Is it go ten x in this um, particular market cycle? You know, who knows? I probably think that's a little bit less likely, but you know, at all these points, these were down in the lower market caps, the the millions. Now we look how many for those who've been in the market for long, look how many billion dollar coins there are. There used to be like about only like one or two. Now it's like, you know, you go down to the you you almost almost get to the top out of the top hundred for the billion dollar coins. But the the top, yeah, the top, yeah, almost yeah. <laughs> almost down out of the top hundred to get out of the billion dollar coins projects, market caps. So it's the long game. And with that, I love you. You love yourself. God loves us. And that's all that matters.